Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi, and thank you so much for joining us in this uh, video series on the Quran and its Ahruf and Qiraat. Last time, uh, Dr. J. Smith, with me here in studio, mentioned something really interesting. At the end, he kind of like issued a challenge to anyone to show him a Quran that is a 7th century Quran. Uh, written before 652, and the date, of course, has to do with Uthmanic collection, that this particular Quran, if found, will match the Quran that we have in our hand today. And it has the same number of, uh, uh, basically, chapters or surahs, 114, and the list can go on and on and on. Now, here's an interesting thing that I would like to bring up to the table today. Even if you find something like this, the question is, are you going to find a Quran that could be read in the exact same way as we read it today? And Dr. J, we're going to talk about the diacritical variance. Okay. And, and that's why I'm asking this question. And the answer is absolutely not, because of right. this another conundrum. And That's this right. has to do with the Arabic language itself. The Arabic language, the alphabet uh, of the Arabic uh, alphabet, uh, was, was very crude, uh, could not have accommodated what we now know today. When it was introduced uh, when in the seventh century, we're not going to go in back to the history of the Arabic. That's now something that Al-Jalal is, is coming up and uh, Dr. Mark Dury is coming up with studies showing that uh, even the Arabic... Ahmed Jalad, yeah, that's right. Jalad, he's, he, yeah. and they're coming up with studies that actually show that the Arabic that's in the Quran is even from that part of the world. It looks like it's from the southern mm -hmm. Levant, about yeah, 600 Nabatean, miles. Yeah, oh, Nabataean, yeah. isn't yeah. that interesting? That's right. Which yeah. supports and corresponds with what Dan Gibson is finding and, and what we're Petra finding. And and everything else, yeah. And all the geographical locations That's within right. the Quran are also yeah. from the Nabataean. But nonetheless, back in the seventh century, what we do know is that there were just skeletal, there were just skeletal consonantal texts. Let's look at this slide here, and let's take a look at this one here. Uh, in fact, yeah, I want to show you these two uh, pages from two different manuscripts. On the left is the Samarkand manuscript. On the right is the Sana manuscript. You know all about that one on the right, don't you? Uh, that's right. And and you know what? As someone who's been looking at these uh, manuscripts a lot and, and other manuscripts, like for instance the Samarkand, I have the entire, uh, you know, basically uh, copies or images of these folios uh, available to me. Uh, even as an Arab speaker, I can assure you by looking at it alone, you won't be able to tell every single word sometimes. You so have to be for careful. for you to read that, yeah. and of course it's very small print right here, but if you, the ones that are on your computer, you pull them up, you enlarge them, for you to read it would be very difficult. And why would it be difficult to read it? It will be difficult if you don't have something to check against, and that's where the problem lies. You know, I remember I think it was Adnan Rashid. Uh, is it? Uh, I think uh, Adnan Rashid, yep. uh, his full name. I just want to make sure I'm respectful. I'm not uh, butchering Adnan his Rashid name. is his name. He's a good friend. Yeah. I've known him for about so 20 Adnan years. So Adnan Rashid, I think the other day, uh, I think he was with even uh, Brother Farid. And what he was doing is he's looking at the, um, you know, uh, Birmingham folios. And he's saying, oh, but praise God, you know, look, we have the exact same thing in the Birmingham folios uh, as it is in our today's Quran. But here's the problem. He was looking at today's Quran and reading it that way. Without today's Quran, you won't be able to tell how you pronounce certain words. Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, I mean, like there are some words like Allah, you can tell right away, this is Allah. Okay, I can read that word. Uh, maybe this is men, maybe, maybe this is wow. But to be careful and try to say this is exactly the same way, that's where we get into the different Qur'an. Okay, that's now we, you're kind of going over the head of a lot of people that are watching. Yeah. There's an awful lot of people who do not, do, did not understand the last five minutes. And the reason why is, take a look at it again. What is it that's missing in these two pictures? And that's why we're talking about the diacritical marks. And what is that? What do you mean diacritical? That's a big word. Basically, you have a letter. In this case, we're using the Arabic letter. And by virtue of the location of certain dots or marks on them, you'll be able to read it and pronounce it correctly. Okay, let's do that. Let's go into the next slide and let's look at the alphabet. Now, here is today's current alphabet. This is what you have in modern standard Arabic. And there, right. as you see, there are 28 letters there. Correct. However, take a look. Of those 28 letters, six of them, or seven of them, let's say seven of them, do not know. Six of them. They're, they're, some say seven, some say seven. I'm going to go with six, okay? These are the six that do not need any dots. And the first one is what? Alif. Next one? Kaf. Next one? Lam. Next one? Meme. Next one? Ha. Next one? Wow. So those are the six that are circled in yellow. Those do not need any dots. Right. All the other 22, however, 22 of them do, don't they? 
which means the vast majority. So for some scholars, it depends on what scholars you're talking to. Some scholars say that in the seventh century, there were really only 16 letters, 16 skeletal letters. Yeah. And I want you just to leave this for a second here in front of everybody. Folks, look at the letter to the left of Aleph, way at the top. You see how many other letters look almost the same, but the different location of the dots? So the ba, the ta, and the ta. That's right. The same thing with the one right after the tha, the jim. Look, the jim, the ha, and the ha. Looks almost the same. You have the da and the thal. The same. Ra, za. The same. Sin, sheen. The same. Sa, da. You see, we have some problems here if you don't know the location of these dots. Let's just look at one letter. Yeah. Let's just do it. Let's just take a smiley face. I like to call it a smiley face, okay? Right. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the most uh, uh, constant of, of letters. And remember, in every word you always have three letters for its root. A root of the Arabic word is always three letters. and that's Three why radicals, exactly. Three radicals, yeah. they call them. Yeah. And when you go into a dictionary, you always go to the third person singular because that's the, the root for every major word, for every mm -hmm. word that's in the dictionary. So yes. let's just look at one of those letters. What happens yeah. when you put one dot above it? Above it, it will be noon. Which is like the N in English. That's okay? right. What about two dots above it? Ta, like the letter T. Like the letter T, okay. Yeah. What about three dots above it? Tha, which is the letter like T-H. The tha, the yeah. the, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So those already, just by putting three different dots, you get three different letters, noon, ta, and tha, right? That's right. But it's not more than that. You can actually get more than that. Let's then take that same smiley face, and now let's put one dot below it. That's ba. Which like is like B. the B. Yeah. Okay, two dots? Yeah, like um, the y. Know, uh, y. Like the Y sound. This is this okay. one example. So, yeah. Here you can get two more letters on that dot, just with that same smiley face. So really, when you look at them, we'll put them up. Their first one, na, ta, tha, ba, ya. Ooh, tu, 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 tu. There you get five different letters, five different dots. You can these did not exist in the seventh century, which means you have five different variations on just one smiley face, and we're not even looking at the vowels yet. That's right. Because what are the three vowels? Uh, well, the, the Arabic vowels here? Yeah, the dhamma, the kasra, and the, the, what are they? Well, what are the, the sounds they make? Uh, well, uh, dhamma is like, uh, it adds uh, basically, um, uh, you know, the way you pronounce something. It would be like an ooh know, sound. Exactly. So uh, you say... And the fatha, what would that sound uh, be? Fatha is like, it, it will, um, it, you know, open the, uh, you know, uh, the way you say something. Like, for instance, you say uh, ta. That's almost like saying something with a fatha, ta. So if I would put sound. a dhamma, tu. Two, you know, and uh, you then know, the kasra would be uh, t. Okay, you know. so it's the a, the u, the a, and the e sound. Yeah. So those are the three vowels, yeah. and they're the short ones. And then we know there's That's also right. long ones. So really, we're talking about five dots and three vowels, and that yeah. did not exist in the seventh century. That's right. At least entirely. There were some cases that you have come up with uh, that may show some dots beginning in the seventh century. And, and that's why we, we see uh, uh, some manuscript, you find like the scribes will go back to older one and they start adding these dots to make it easier to read. Okay, now let's take a, the same uh, exercise we've just done and let's put three of these smiley faces together. What happens? When you put three smiley faces together, you can get, and let's go on the slide there, you can get as many as woo, two, 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 19 different words. At least. At least. Because you have found even more than this, haven't you? Uh, you could come up with more. <laughs> so, no, so uh, I mean, it, it depends on how creative you want to be with these uh, basically words and dots and uh, diacritical marks. It could be house, or it sprouted, or stayed over, or a girl, or daughter, she built, yeah. stood firm, grew, we repent, he repents, she repents. It could be he spreads, or he broadcasts, she does right. it, or we do, do it, uh, he, he fixed, she destroyed, we destroyed, you destroyed, it would destroy it, or I repent it. Yeah, and, and you know, the word, for instance, for grew, right there, as you can see it over there, which is nebata, you know? Uh, I can make it a verb and say nebata, meaning cause to grow. I mean, I can, you can make it a verb, you know, just by adding, you know, dhamma, uh, shadda, things like that. Uh, in this case, the shadda uh, basically helped with that. And now it sounds like a verb versus a noun, for instance. Can you then understand why the Arabic these very, these earliest manuscripts that didn't have any of these dots, didn't have any of these vowels, could be really read many, many different ways, depending on who decided to put what dots, what vowels where. Yeah. And that is the beginning of the Kerat, Kera'at and Ahru conundrum. Absolutely. And, you know, again, uh, back again to the verbs. Uh, the word for grew, nabata, that's in uh, past tense. You can make it imperative, nabata. 
You know, that's an imperative, you know. So a lot of things can change here. And this is why, for instance, we have some readings say qul, others will say qal, right? You know, he big said or difference. Say. Exactly. Imperative. Yeah. Grew or grow. You do it. Grow. So you're right. Imperative for people who don't know means it's a command. Yeah. So it's fascinating that with that kind of freedom and anybody then reading the text that had no dots and then suddenly the dots are there, you're going to put the dots different places. Once you put dots with it, if you have five different uh, five different possibilities with one smiley face and then you have three letters next together uh, so that gets you f that gets you 15 different possibilities to say nothing of the vowels the dhamma the kasar and the fatta yeah. you can imagine the variations the variety the main enormous amount of freedom you have to put dots and vowels with depending on what you think the context is you're going to get lots of different variants and that's what the get out and the up roof difficulties are that's correct and you know i want to uh, we're going to close but i want to go out in a limp here dr J. It is for reasons like this that even if you find a 7th century complete Quran, you're not going to find one with this system because this was added later from Islamic own sources. They tell us that was added later. But here's the thing. It is becoming more and more obvious, forensically speaking, that the issue, the conundrum of Qiraat existed at a later time and you have a tradition like Bukhari's trying to take it back to the days of the Prophet to make sense of it. It is because of the lack of these dots that the different Qur'at existed, the different readings, and Bukhari had to come to the rescue by making a claim of something that happened at the time of the Prophet that justifies these things. Without thinking and knowing and, and understanding that, that yeah. he cannot make that claim. We're going to get to that later on in one of the episodes when we look at that claim because people are not thinking through. This claim makes no sense in the 7th century. It makes all the sense in the 9th century when it was written. Exactly. But not in the 7th century. And it makes sense that immediately after Ibn Hisham, uh, Ibn uh, uh, Mujahid came in to try to canonize it because there was a lot of them already. Yeah. So which ones were revealed, you know, and he has to come to the rescue as well. Good man. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. What is it that we're going to talk about next time? We're going to then look at some of these Qurans. We're going to actually introduce some of the things that we have here on the table. We're going to start showing you uh, that there is uh, 30 of these. 30 of these official, that's just the official ones, and we're going to show you where they came, how they came, and we're going to look at two different centuries. We're going to look and see what the 7th century reference, what the traditions tell us about the 7th century uh, readings in contradistinction to the 8th century actual readings when they were actually introduced. Very well. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us. Uh, we cannot wait until uh, the next episode as we begin to continue with our process of unpacking all of these interesting finds and also in this case we'll look at these 30 different samples at least we're going to look at some of them thank you uh, uh dr j and thank you everyone god bless you until we meet again have a blessed day thank you for watching this video be sure to like and subscribe to our channel sira international also click on the bell so that you can receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or we go live. And I would like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking on the link right below. And that way you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you on how you can give to our channel. So thank you from the bottom of my heart.